welcome back to part two of my skull taker let's play total war warhammer 3. so picking things up we left them last time we're back with the skull take action super excited to see so many of you guys enjoying this brand new series here on the channel please do keep your comments advice tips and tactics coming great to see so many of you sharing your corn strategies and advice so far and loads of you sharing unit name suggestions over on part one of the series. Do keep posting them there on part one exclusively. That way, they're all in one easy place for me to find. But hopefully, by the end of this episode, Skulltaker will have a full 20 stack army. Meaning, next episode, part three, out tomorrow. Uh, I'll have gone through at the start of the episode and added in the first round of your unit name suggestions. And then, from then on, every time we get a new full 20 stack force, I'll add in more of your suggestions. But yeah, do keep it all coming. Super excited, though, for this campaign and glad so many of you are enjoying this one as well as seeing loads of you enjoying my Gorbad Ironclaw campaign that I've also started at the same time and in fact in around about three or four hours after this episode has released on YouTube we'll have the start of my third and final new series from the early access of the Omens of Destruction DLC uh, the new Ogre Kingdoms legendary Lord Golfag Maneater I'll be streaming and recording that uh, today before this episode actually goes out on YouTube and I should have part one and two recorded and edited from that. But part one will be out later on tonight. Too. So do feel free to tune into that if you want some ogre goodness. But yes, let's crack on with the Skull Taker action. I have slightly tweaked um, our Tim, the Blood Reaper's name, to Tim the Skull Counter. Quite a few of you suggesting uh, similar skull-themed names. But I quite like the suggestion of him acting almost as like an accountant to Skull Taker. He's the one counting all the skulls. So I quite like the name Skull Counter. Although a lot of you did suggest that eventually we swap out the Blood Reaper and when we can get a cultist in here because they add additional replenishment and would be a better support character for Skull Taker in the long run. That way I could probably use this Blood Reaper to scout out um, potential enemies, track down some lords, at least while we don't have kind of clear line of sight on them. Uh, throughout the uh, the campaign map in the Fog of War right now. So yeah, to get a cultist, I was having a look. We need the second tier of the basic military for mortals, which we can do at uh, Chakwa uh, once that's upgraded, I think. Uh, we can start going through that line. Get ourselves a cultist of corn. A lot of you suggesting Tim names for the cultist. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to have a lot of Tims this series. It wouldn't be the first series that we've had multiple Tims. There can be multiple Tims. There can be demon Tims and there can be uh, mortal Tims. So that is fine. But yeah, keep it all the, all, all the advice, tactics and stuff coming. All the Also the lore. I'll share some stuff as well that I really enjoyed from part one. But yeah, loads of really cool lore bits and pieces as well. We are going to start by sending a Skull Taker towards... Um, the Bretonians, the Bordeloo Errant. I think I'm going to go after them first. Just kind of to deal with them because then we've got most of the North Secure. Okay, there's the Empire up here as well. Um, which we might then go into. But I kind of feel like we can consolidate this territory a little bit easier first. And then look to surge south against the Lizardmen and potentially the Vampire Pirates. But hopefully I'm kind of hoping they might keep them busy actually. We'll kind of see how things go and uh, what goes on there. But yeah, we're going to go after... Um, Albrick before he gets too powerful. So we're going to go up here. Yeah, we're trespassing just against them because actually this is like a, a, a meeting point of multiple regions here. Because if we go east, we'll upset those lizard men. So we're going to leave them for now. We're just going to go through here. And how is our winds of magic? Okay, yeah. So it was, was it just lower there? Yeah, weak winds of magic there, which is why it was dropping. We've got blowing winds of magic here. But we should be able to see that on the overlay. Winds of magic. Yeah, there we go. Blowing. It's really strong over there. So blowing, I think it just it's just like neutral. There, there it's weak. Yeah, that's fine. That's all good. So we can see they've actually got a force up there. Meal beset. Pretty cool. So we'll sit here. So we don't need to do the one that will cause us attrition, the combat trials, for more winds of uh, winds of magic right now. What is the threshold for that? Uh, 0 to 34, so 35 and above we're good, so we can probably go for uh, Demonic Portal. We do drop a little bit, but it's only 5, that's fine. That is A-OK. -okay. And then, yeah, it gives a little bit of replenishment there. Can't afford to recruit more units because we're already in the negative, that's fine. And yet those are all going through. I might even tweak this because a lot of you were suggesting if I can get more Corn Corruption, that really helps for reforging control and obviously that chance to automatically colonize although actually we don't really need that here because we've got all of these colonized there once have you said alternative way to kind of start this campaign we could have gone through and raised and then just let 
you know, wait for those missions to probably trigger a few turns later when we get that automatic colonization. But I just wanted to push ahead, which is why I occupy them to start with, and obviously not spend all um well we could we could have actually yeah, raised for skulls, couldn't we? So actually it would have been fun. I could have got some blood hosts. I think uh, what's gonna make the most sense? I mean control for more corn corruption is good over time. I don't know how how much that intensifies actually what the next kind of threshold is. I mean more growth and construction costs that's gonna be useful. Let's let's switch to that rather than the upkeep reduction. Income post uh post battle loop local problems that's not gonna help us. Income from all buildings plus 10%. So we're gonna lose a little bit of income, but that's fine. Got some more research going on. I am gonna go for the increased corn corruption, all provinces, because that's really key and helpful for us. Um then probably a yeah, spread rage for more colonies. It's all looking eight good. Right. Skull throne. That one's about to run out. I'll summon from beyond. Um, the Blood Host summoned will have two additional. I might even go for that actually, because we I'm I think I'm we're going to raise the minor provinces, the minor regions in the province, and just take the provincial capital, which is this one. So we'll probably strike that one. If we then raised it for a blood host, we could send the blood host to take out Brigon. Or actually Skull take it that way and maybe both together. Depends when Albrecht turns up. I'm assuming he's gonna take out those lizards. But yeah, let's end the turn and see what happens. And quickly share some of my favorite lore that you guys shared on part one. So quite a few of you shared this bit, but um, the top one that a lot of people thumbed up was from Wolf McCullen. Uh, fun lore tidbit, Skulltaker has been defeated once. Uh, Skulltaker challenged and attempted to take the skull of Sigmar back when Sigmar was still mortal and was bonked so hard by the Heldenhammer that he was banished back to the Chaos Realm and received a permanent scar from the blow. Skulltaker has been absolutely bent about the loss ever since and dreams of the day he can seek his revenge and take the skull of Sigmar that he was denied many millennia ago. And uh, there was some um, additional stuff added there that apparently, in fairness to Skulltaker, the fight lasted for three straight days. Uh, he wasn't just insta-killed, yeah, so he held his own, but he was eventually defeated uh, by Sigmar. Um, Vampire Coast Mutineers, but apparently, yeah, that's, that's uh, Skulltaker's only... Uh, lost uh, duel. Right, so those of his men got wiped out, but at least we know that is where Albrecht is, so we do have time to swoop in behind him and start carving up Bretonian skulls. <laughs> uh, a hero becomes a legend. Win 10 battles with any single hero character. We've currently done four of those. Armor of Silvered Steel. Yeah, nice. Right, so Camille has marched in here. I'm assuming it's just plenty of peasants. We should be fine. Can go in so we'll get more skulls from it anyway so i think we probably can go for yeah blood x and hello the next blood host summon will have two additional units thousand skulls we only need 1500 for a blood host if i'm not mistaken we could go for post battle loot or corn corruption all the chance can't yeah all of them are good but i'm, I'm gonna go for that one because i'm planning on getting that blood host so we want to maximize the troops we get from it lovely stuff skull taker Declare war. Let's carve up some Bretonians. We're strength rank 84. They're strength rank 43. Okay. Let's hopefully weaken them a bit here with this strike. It's close victory. Low casualties. Not losing anybody. I want to see Skulltaker in action though on his new mount. We've got some cavalry, anti-infantry. We don't actually have... We've got arm piercing there. Anti-infantry. We don't actually have anything anti-large, do we? So we might, we might struggle a little bit against the cavalry. But hopefully we do. They are going to be tired though. That's good. In we take a look at the map first. Although we'll see it when we load on in on the deployment. So we don't really need to do it. Go. Who are you all going to be playing as first, by the way, uh, if you're picking up the DLC and going for um, the main DLC pack or, or I guess whether you're just going to buy one of the individual packs because they're doing that again like they did um, with the previous DLC, Thrones of Decay, where you can either buy the complete DLC with all three new Legendary Lords or you can just choose to buy each individual Legendary Lord separately. There's a link in the description if you want to support the channel and get a great deal and pick them up that way. But otherwise, feel free to shop around, get them wherever you want to, wherever you usually purchase games from. But yeah, which Legendary Lord are you going to play as first or which one are you picking up? We will take the high ground. I mean, we're attacking them, but I can probably harass them a little bit with my Furies. We want to try and knock out their missile troops a little bit. 
So I'm going to have you guys going over there. We've got the hounds as well. It's where they've got the cavalry and they've got the spears here. So yeah, I'm just going to have all of you guys up through the trees, I think. So yeah, we won't want to really spread ourselves out too much. God, if we had if we had some artillery, this is a lovely map otherwise. I'm just going to pull you guys right to the top. Have you guys there? Uh, have you guys there? And have you guys here? Yeah, you guys, you guys should be good at dealing with the cavalry. To be fair, arm piercing and pretty strong. You're looking great. Let's have a look at Skull Take on his new mount. Can't lick your skull now, can you? Because you've got to hang on with your other hand. He just wants to lick some skulls. That is a glorious sword, by the way, mate. Ready to count some skulls, Timmy? Of course you are. Of course you are. Right. Let's go. Are they going to come to us? or They're, gonna, they're probably going to sit there. I'll be very surprised, actually, if they do come all the way out to us. Because I'm the one attacking them. Okay. Gotta watch out for those knights errant. Although we can see they've already got uh, negative modifiers against them now. Because this is the new quality of life change. We can now actually see what tired does to them. So Tired is taking off four of their melee attack, eight of their speed. Not affecting men arms with shields, though. Interesting. If I do a charge bonus, yeah, reduce. Yeah, that's good to see. Let's let them have a little bit of time to form up, see what they want to do. Put all their cavalry over this way. Otherwise, we'll just move towards them slowly. Hold our ground, and as they then surge on in, we'll counter hard. One benefit being on this mount, though, even if I'm not the biggest fan of it, is it does increase Skulltaker's armor quite substantially, which is good. They've moved all their cavalry away from here, haven't they? I'm going to go after them with the uh, blood crushers then. As that happens, I'm going to go forward here a little bit. We don't want to push too much further up because otherwise we're going to get charging down the hill. Oh, they do have some spears over here though. I mean, I don't mind if we lose the Furies, to be honest. Because yeah, otherwise we are going to have to charge up the hill to them. Here we go. Carve a bloody path through. They do have some, oh, they got the mounted yeoman cavalry there. If 
fine. Here we go. Right, there's the cavalry going in. They're going to hit big. Come on through. Go, 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 go. Up and round, up and round, up and round. Doggo's in behind. Oh, she's down. Wowzer. Yeah, hit them in the back. They're in the settlements. All we need to do here is just break them. Although I'm assuming we want to probably capture as many of them as possible. It's more skulls to harvest, right? Go, go, go. Go, hounds, go. Total chaos. Oh, we lost one of the Furies by the looks of it. That is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, the leadership is absolutely spent. Guns routed. Frightened by enemy unit. Nice. I feel like we're getting lots more information about what's specifically doing what now. That's quite good to know. I like that. Yeah, carve them up, boys. Go, go, go. Lovely stuff. What's that? Cloak of, oh, the Cloak of Skulls, yeah. The ward save. Oh, more than 40 kills, of course. Yeah. That's what we wanted to get in there as well. And it makes him immune to flanking. Get a few more skulls. Go, go, go. They've all been trapped there. Harvest all the skulls, please. That's it, Tim. Start counting peasant skulls. What are you guys pumped by? Oh, the hungering blades. And you guys have got Hellblade. Nice. That makes you rather disgusting, doesn't it? Still going. I still to this day don't 100% know. Is it... I mean, maybe maybe it does affect the Skull Taker for some more Skulls, but... What captures? Is it, is it better to... Cause I know in, like... I feel like there was a shift from after Medieval 2 into Empire to War onwards, and it's been something that's kind of stuck around the game since Empire because they all kind of use the same code base as such or have used elements of it. But certainly in Medieval 2, it was always worth you manually chasing down the enemy because that seemed more efficient than just hitting end battle and letting the game calculate captives and stuff like that for you automatically. Whereas whenever I brought this up in the past, I always see plenty of comments of people saying, nah, 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 you're all good. Just let the, just hit embattled. There's no need to chase them down yourself. Um, it doesn't do anything better for more efficient XP grinding or captives or anything like that. Is that still true? Is that the case? Am I wasting my time here? Or should I just be taking that end battle button? I still don't know. After all these years, after all these hundreds of hours, He 
Entity's just getting stuck there through the trees. And it's really hard to take out their entities when they're all mobbed around like that. It's just one last spearman. There we go. Boom. Decisive victory. 122 losses. Obviously one of the one of the Furies. That's fine. They, they might reforge. Do Furies reforge? They're demonic, right? Yeah, because they, they disappeared. Blood crushes 233. Lovely stuff. Really good with all the infantry, actually. I genuinely thought their, their knights might get some better charges, but I think they only started charging right at the last minute and just didn't get to, to do anything. Five hundred and eighteen skulls. I think that's actually given us a mission. Oh, demons reforged. So I'm assuming have we got them back because they're not they're not um, grayed out. Crown of command, lovely. I guess also certainly in this in this case where it's settlement battle where we we should have ended it straight away actually rather than hunting them all down. But is that better for more skulls? I just don't know. Just don't know. Right, we are going to go blood for the blood god. Um, and that is going to give us um, blooded, gives us a blood host. Oh, you guys also said cannot colonize. That's almost more like a quality of life thing for corn that they've done so that it stops other factions going in and taking uh, settlements. Although I believe we had it before last episode. I still have that chance to colonize, go through that. It's just meaning specifically it stops armies, including my own, going up to a settlement and saying, hey, I want to occupy this. But if you have other ways to colonize settlements or chances in the background, uh, that they seem to go through that. But yeah, blood for the blood god. Love it. Crown of command. Uh, raise settlement. Replenishes 7%. Campaign moon range. After raising settlement, skull taker, agent of blood. Follow again. Nice. 500 skulls clicks. Yeah, I thought we had a mission for that. 100 favor. Love it. And yeah, we got that. we got that fury back. Perfect. I feel like it could have done with like a little pulse, a little flash around the edge of the unit card just to really highlight it. But I guess if you know it's not grayed out, then it's fine. Um, we've got two points spend. We've finished off kill for more defense. Uh, what level do we get that? In rank nine. So, okay, next rank we get that. So I don't have to worry about the blood throne much longer. That's way, way better. Okay, more health on the blood throne. But that's better for all the other stats apart from armor a little bit. I'm going to go for corn's favor because more corruption and bonus versus infantry. That's great. Thick skin is missile resistance, brass collar. Eh. Uh, we can't go through that top line until rank 12 onwards. And that's good for replenishment for the Lord. Ceaseless determination. I think I'm going to go for slaughter for the physical resistance. That's quite nice. Tim, skull counter. You are going to finish up going through kill. More defense. Oh, wait. No, you're not. You are going to get increased mobility, buddy. You'll get increased mobility. Now, so yeah, we can't go in and take that. There is our oh-so-lovely um, blood host. Now, we can't swap the units around, so it's not like I can instantly get myself a skull cannon. They only last for four turns, but I'm thinking with, with four turns, that force, you could go take Brigon for sure. And you can raise that for me. Uh, we can have another blood host. Oh, well, no, no. Well, raise it for skulls, not for another blood host. We don't have enough of that. Um, what's this? Unholy man. Oh, we get another one. Oh, cool. You hit that threshold. Perfect. Horns glare. Take control of targeted unoccupied ruin. Oh, so I could just fire that straight on this. Because we, we want to take the capital, right? Yeah, Although we could, we could sack it and then instantly reclaim it with this now, couldn't we? Mm, but then have to build it up. That matter? Don't actually know. I think I'm just going to use it on this one for now. Because then, then I can bring Skulltaker in there for additional replenishment. Perform. Perfect. Lovely stuff. Um, so you can, you can keep going, but let's pop him in there. Only killing is real. Oh, we can get Chaos Warriors here. Among champions. Only the oh, no, that's, sorry, that's global. My bad. That's because we've got... Is That gives you Chaos Warriors. Okay. They're nice, but I'm not going to go for them just yet. So, yeah, we want to go for this for the cultist. Although I was thinking about getting that construction cost for all the local province. Yeah, we should get that in there. And then let's get that leveled up. We need that anyway. 
Uh, I'm going to go for income from loot. Yeah, I can't really... Well, yeah, we can't afford to do anything else. Demons. Oh, we're not going to have enough money for all this. Um, wait to do that then. Until we built that in there. And then construction cost for all buildings. Okay, yeah, save money on that then. Save money on that. Just get that in there for the reduction. Uh, construction cost, of course, we've already got it reduced there. Then in here, we can go in and more dimensional tears. So I guess we could build the cultist building here, but we've got more of the medicinal plants. Although we don't actually... Oh, no, we do have a resource. More replenishment rate. Oh, that's very nice. Yes, 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 yes. Hit points, plus 2% all character faction wide. That's great. Cultist Enclave Medicine. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Um, I guess we could go for that. Especially because you're going to have medicinal stuff here. Um, mortal building. We're going to have it. It's each one, isn't it? It really doesn't make a difference other than that. Chaos Warriors, Corn, Blood Letters to Chaos Warhounds. It's exactly the same across both. Yeah, it is. Um, really, really does not matter. So I'll just go for that. If you wanted more Blood Letters right now, we could do. Although we can globally recruit. They're very expensive, so let's not do that. Right, 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 right. Um, McCloak. Oh, cool. You can gain more skills. So I could go for Iron Neck Wanderer or Dubois the Prescient. Um, more experience, defeated lord. I'm kind of tempted to actually just wait until I've got enough for this, then upgrading the blood god's shackles and upgrades the cloak of skulls. I think I will save for that for now. Skip that. Check diplomacy. They're at 96 strength rank. And I'm strength rank 5. But, oh, because I've gained that other army, of course. Of course, of course, of course. He's lost uh, an army and he's only got his other force. Yeah, it's all good. Nice. I did see a couple of comments about saying, um, would I consider getting vassals in this run? I don't know. Like, are they are they worthwhile? I kind of feel some vassals for some passive income, I guess, might help a little bit. But our whole thing is about going around spreading corruption and causing carnage, right? So that's just some skulls left untaken, surely. And I feel like we should be taking all the skulls. Can I force march at all? No. Um... So I could I could do the attrition for you guys and get some more skulls that way, but no, let's not let's not hurt them. Just send them that way. Right, end the turn. The red beasts. There we go. There's Albrecht. Sentinels of Zeti are gone. Nice. Uh, the love of war. Raise corn corruption in any adjacent region not already controlled by corn 75. Okay. That's a good amount of gold, but we need to do that before we then go in and start occupying. Keep it increasing. Oh, here we go. Ah, so it's above 50 now. So, right, it causes attrition to non-Chaos Worshipping armies. Good. It is a 6% modifier for the ruins. I'm just that. Do you take me for a challenge? Yeah, you know what? I actually didn't think that is totally exposed. He could go straight in there and start hitting that. Uh, we're going to get you upgraded. And then we're going to build... Well... No, I'm not going to build in there because it's going to be all my gold. So I've probably got to move towards him, haven't I? Ooh, there's some decent... Yes, yeah, foot squires. Okay, their defense is terrible, but their armor's all right. Cavalry, Knights of the Realm, anti-large. So, we... What we probably want to do then, actually, is forget about Brigon right now. We need to focus on knocking out Albrecht's force. Because if I go over there and then come back... If he goes this way, then we're really going to be playing chase and he's going to be smashing through my forces, crippling us. So we need to move towards him. What we probably need to do is set up an ambush. 
hero's journey ends here! Who knows a coward? I would like more replenishment for my Furies, but if we if we don't go far enough forward, I can't strike him next turn anyway. I think that's what we'd have to do. I would fight the gods themselves. Spread so we want you guys there. And then we're in range of that. They've got a reasonable garrison in there, plus his own troops. That's quite nasty. Never. Hoping we lure him out here. Serial killing. Uh, no, we're going to go for spread rage. Bitter raiding. Oh, plus 40%. Damn. That's quite nice. Yeah, let's, let's hope he takes the bait. Let's hope he takes the bait. Give a good fight and your skull shall ascend. Hope he sees the red beast and goes, yeah, let's go take them out while we can. And then his skulls can be added to our cloak. Um, although, actually, looking at it, if we took out Albrecht, that's 58 straight away. I the thing, it all plus 10%. That would immediately allow us to get that. So I'm just thinking we go for this to get us the extra experience. Let's empower there. Oh, that now allows us to go up here. Or do we need both linking to it? It doesn't look like it. Enables the ability to travel to an enemy lord. That would be cool. Like, just jump on him. Yeah, let's do that to turbo him up quickly. We're not going to spend any more money just in case things go bad for us and he goes this way. Because then we're not going to be having fun. Right. Albrecht, come on. Please take that. Oh, so juicy, tasty bait, you fool. Please. Please, 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 please. I don't know when it's your turn, but I kind of want to slow it down for when it is. Ah, oh, no, you stayed put. In Force March, you Wally. Okay, we'll have to attack you in that settlement, because otherwise I'm going to lose the Red Beasts. Ambush was foiled because you sent this guy outside. No, you've already got Pierre, the Paladin. Don't really want to fight them in a walled I settlement. Must keep my holy vow. No. Could wait one more turn, but then I lose that blood host. They are they are going to be tired right now if we just go in for them. You know what? We actually might work if we set these guys raiding. Maybe that will lure them out. So let, let's go there. Let's see if the raiding is enough to draw him out. If not, we'll press the attack next turn. Because, yeah, if we can draw them out to us, that'd be great. Um, we could... Medicinal plants. Oof. Our upkeep is... Yeah, really struggling. So, whether we like it or not, we've got to go next turn. He's building up another army there. Look, we're building that. There's nothing else I can afford to build. Otherwise, we'll be out of cash. So, here we go. Round two. Come on, Albrecht. Was it because I insulted you last turn? Come on. Go for a little walk. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I slowed it down. It's your turn coming up. Come on. You've gone that way, but go on. Go on, Albrick. Come on out. Go for a little walk. Ah, oh, you wuss. Right, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Let's bring the wrath of corn to your settlement instead. Still in force march. Wally. I'm now taking attrition because... Well, we're going to start taking attrition. You've got your kill, though. Sacred Executioner! Blooded one! 
Close defeat. Ooh, that's a lot of peasants. I don't like the trebuchet, but we could, we should be able to knock that out with the furies. We've got a lot in that other army. And to be fair, we can be completely and utterly gung-ho with them because they're gone next turn anyway. So that is A-OK. -okay. War leaders, recruit rank for cult. Is that a capacity? That would be good because we actually want to get one soon. Um, skulls collected from skull piles. I still don't know what, what, what skull piles just fought from the battlefield. Skulls for skull throne. I'm going to go for war leaders because I do plan on getting that cultist soon. But even with them coming in, it is a close defeat. But if I don't go and try and fight him now. We lose our advantage. We'd have to pull back. Gut. We'd have to try and draw him out elsewhere. So I guess we're going to have to try it then. In we go. Let's turn a defeat into a win. Okay, where do we want to attack? That's not going to see me get absolutely shredded by all the towers. Mm, no, they've, they've got all the angles covered here, pretty much. Uh, although, actually, that is probably this gate here. If we focus up, oh, especially because we can hide in the trees. And then focus up here. Or likewise, yeah, around there. You'll probably be hit by that one and that one, but we can clear them away. Might have the doggos elsewhere just to go. Although then they're, they're mm. I'll pop them in here. We might be able to go for that one. We don't want to spread out too much, just the cavalry is gonna have us. Oh, is he unable to hide on his big old scooter? That makes sense. Have them over there, then flank with them. Where are my reinforcements? My reinforcements are coming in over there. That's fine. wait until they come in anyway. Yeah, I'm assuming the Blood Shrine can't. But I can have you far enough back that you can't get hit. Everyone else all hidden. How far do the towers fire? Okay, fair bit. But they're now barely over here. They're going to be where my reinforcements are. I mean, I could go for a capture, actually. But in order to get that, I've got to get that key position first. It's doable. Go, go. Don't know if they're going to come off the walls and shuffle around. If they do, then when the reinforcements turn up, they could start going for them too. Just out of their range, so we'll need to form up when they come in. Again, 
to start activating those towers. Yep. Go knock out their missile troops. Try and get in here. Hold them in and then send a go through for a cap, I think. Is going to be our best shot here of actually getting a win with minimal casualties. Keep the hounds there. If they all move away, then when the reinforcements come on in, then we can start harassing them again. Yeah, they will come in here. That's fine. Go, go, go. You guys are hammering in at the gates. Our reinforcements are here. Go try and pick them off over there. We keep these guys up on the walls. Knock out their missile troops first. And then we'll keep all the infantry up there because then the cavalry can't come up there and hit us. in. Take flight again. There's that unit of bowmen over there. Go knock them out. There's the trebuchet. Take that out as well. Where's he gone? Oh, he's hit. Bring him down, bring him down, bring him down. Knock him out, knock him out. Taking them out there, perfect. Once the hounds can get in here, then we're golden. Go. The infantry now coming to the walls, that's fine. You guys are getting attacked by these guys on the ground. You know what? That is fine. I'm going to get you all down there just to keep them a little bit busy. Are we done at the gates here? Nearly. What I want to do here 
primarily is just mob the lords and get them down. He can nearly do his ability again. Albrick falls and I think we've got our win here. Take him off the wall. Then I need you guys to go back and take out the other missile units with the other Furies. Whereas you guys can now go for the cap. Okay, go. You keep fighting over here. How are we doing? It's Albrick. There's Timmy. That's it, that's it, that's it. Don't want to lose the shrine though if I can help it. Finish him. That's it. Decapitate him. Decapitate him. Broken. Ah, wuss. Oh, crap. They're going. We've got him. Him and the Paladin both broken. He's desperately trying to come back. They start seeing what's happening here. Go, go. How are you guys doing over here? Fine. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? He's broken, but he's trapped in there. He's down. Happy days. Enemy Lord is gone. I'm expecting a full route any second then from you guys. Wanted to try and get some more zoomed in shots, but had to be quite careful with this, I think. But we're going to force a full route in a minute. Perfect. was honestly a little bit concerned when I saw that it was going to be a defeat. I was like, I'm not sure how we can do this. But there we go. That worked really well, actually. Using the Furies, picking off their uh, missile troops, and then going on in. Plus, obviously, we had our... It wasn't actually our primary objective to get a win this way by breaking them. But thankfully, taking out Albrecht, him drawing him into the fight, was, that worked out really well. Obviously, our primary aim was to try and sneak on around and go in for the cap. We didn't even need to do that in the end. Perfect. Right. And the battle. Close victory. I will happily take that. And Albrick's skull now adorns the cloak of skulls. <laughs> now let's see if we've uh, reforged any of our demon boys. No, okay, yeah, so they're grayed out when, they, when they're gone completely. So we lost a Bloodletters of Corn, and we lost two of the Chaos Furies. Okie dokie. Yeah, it's fine, though. Blade of Blood. I wonder if Albrecht will come back before we finish them all off. Maybe. Um, it's Paladin. Albrecht has fallen. Gained 562 skulls. Plenty of gold. 
Um, we don't have an... Oh, no, we could actually do blood for the blood gold. We could get another blood host. Um, or we could sack it for a load more skulls. We actually wanted to take this one, didn't we? We just wanted to sack it for the gold and the unit replenishment. Um, so, yeah, that's what we'll do. Oh, wait, no, sorry. We wanted to, we wanted to occupy it, didn't we? Ah... We want we wanted to occupy, but we don't have enough skulls unless I do that. Then it will allow me to go on and take well, to go raise the other ones, I guess. But I mean I could just do that, but then I can't occupy this one easily. But we could have that chance that it could just automatically get captured. And that would give me another blood host. But do I want then we're gonna be really behind on skulls. Because I could always then go take the skulls now. And then hit the next one, blood host it, and use that to come back. Yeah, let's do that. Let's skulls for the skull throne. Raise it. Beautiful. Nice. We've got his new mount. Hammer and anvil. Melee attack plus 15 when fighting at sea. Hmm, okay. Guess we need to set a sail. We can go take them out there. You guys, unfortunately can't do anything for me because you're going to get instantly wiped. Um, all until we've all I will not. Mm. On the off on the off chance, I guess. Do it that way. Uh, we can now get that in there. We can now get that in there. We could do more growth from that. Get me a cultist shortly. Put you there. Slaughter. Rank 11. Oh, we got, whoa, we went three levels up. Nice, yeah, because of all the extra, all the extra stuff. Um, his red line for skull takers making them more powerful. Definitely going to want to do that. Blood feast is army replenishment. Yeah, it's not going to be terrible. Quarter bloodletting and couple post battle loot. That's that's great. And corrupt. They're all actually just because of. And I think this is more not just because of what the blue line stuff does, but it's more the fact that the mechanics of corn and, and other factions steadily and surely see are adding to them. And there's there's more subtle things beneath the surface, which means that we're getting less and less of thinking oh this blue line you know doesn't have that many interesting or useful mechanics or ways to play now there actually are lots of different viable ways because you know having increases to corn corruption that's really good for us uh obviously post battle loot's always great uh, i'd probably say this is um premonition is probably still the, the least useful for us um your blood feast just the way you know more replenishment wanted and things like that that's, that's great love it um harbingers of death hell forged engines there are so many so many choices so many choices of things to get and do. Oh, of course, of course, we've got the the Wraithmongers now for mortals. I'm going to definitely go for... I'll have some of these corn, um, corn gores. I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to rule out them being in Skulltaker's army. I know, I guess they're... I guess they're... Are they... They're not demonic, are they? Fury of the Skull Throne. Primal Fury, yeah. So they're not, they're not demonic, but... I still think they're valid. We can use them. Um, okay. Could I could increase the strength of my skull takers plus six and nine charge bonus. Um or I could just continue to power him up. I mean, he's already a strong boy. And we'll be going through that next. And then we're coming back to this. Yeah, you know what? Let me let me pop points into that because that's gonna be useful early on. Because those are our primary units that we are using. Lovely stuff. Do not test my patience. Um, mortal concern. Yeah, I mean, globally, they're very expensive, so I don't really want to do more of that just yet. I can't get into my own territory, can I? Oh, just over the border. Yeah, do that. Um, oh, but we can... Oh, we, we can recruit in... Oh, no, we can just always flip back, can we? Interesting. We don't get locked into it anymore. And then we can go straight to that. What's the benefit of that? More replenishment. No, same amount of replenishment. Don't do that then. Um, right, to get some more blood letters then. 
to replace the ones that we just lost. We can only get two anyway. We lost the we've lost blow both Furies in this army now, but that's fine. It's a okay. Cool, cool, cool. Timmy, Tim, Tim. Kill. Name. Uh, do you want slaughter as well? Brass collar, thick skin, missile resistance, hate slanesh. I mean, we might start spreading sending you out on the campaign map at some point, not too distant future. Have you at Maim, I think. Right, um, yeah, who wants what? He's got the Skull Tech, he's got the Blade of Blood. Makes sense. Um, he doesn't have any armor on him. You have this one. Skull Taker. Have that for more armor. And you've already got the other ancillaries there already. Now, for your Cloak of Skulls, we could actually do that one to the ability to travel to enemy lords. Let's be able to, what, just jump straight there? What's my cooldown? See, now I kind of want to have that rather than powering up the other one. Travel to an enemy lord. It is forbidden. That sounds like it would be real handy, especially because... Well, I mean, I'm going to be wandering around that way. I want all the things. Yes. I mean, we've already got those. Okay, let's let's do this one. Travel costs. Oh, right. So, oh, it will cost. Ah, uh, it costs us stuff. And cooldown. Right. Well, let's empower it and let's see. Let's see how that works. From there, we can go up to all the different ones now. All corruption plus twenty-five after defeating a lord. That's great. All blood host replenish. Summons a blood host. Summons a blood host after defeating a lord. That that one is mad. We're going to have blood host for days. Any skull piles across the world are moved. Skull takers location after defeating. What are skull piles? Is that skull piles are the skulls of our enemies that you know you, you there's a gener they generated do some defeat. Okay, skulls can be collected by killing enemy units in battle from skull piles dropped by oh dropped by other factions in corrupted provinces. Ah, amongst other sources. Right. So in other corn right. Right, 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 right. That makes a lot of sense. And then we would get a I'm trying to think, it's like the, the sonic thing, the power up you get that suddenly magnets all the rings to you. That's what that will do. Any skull piles across the world are moved skull taker location after defeating a lord. And that'll just like magnet them all to his position. Beautiful. Oh, I'm now able to travel to enemy lords instantly. Uh, left click the travel button to view possible targets. Love it. Only the finest. Unable to in current stance because I'm recruiting. Okay, we'll take a look at it next turn. Let's just do one more end turn and then see where we gonna go we do have plenty of skull post battle corn corruption uh we could we you know what we could activate that one we will still have enough for another blood host or we could just harvest more skulls because do we really need another blood host just just now to go back over that way to finish him off probably not um so we could have that one which could give us a chance of that one colonizing i'm pretty sure i could have sworn in my arbor campaign there was a if you hovered over, there's a chance to see the percentage chance of it um, colonizing. But I'm assuming maybe that's because we had to wait until that thing disappeared and then it's a little marker on that. But um, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's fire that one off. See if that has a better chance. We've got more corruption spreading now. So that's always good. Right. One more in turn, and then we'll wrap things up for this second episode. Didn't actually mean for this one to go on for another hour, but enjoy another hour-long episode. Typically, episodes will be 40 to 50 minutes-ish in length, although I do try and aim to do hour specials every 10 episodes. But they're recruiting a lot of troops there, so we're going to have to go straight after that. Or set ourselves up in ambush and catch them when they come across here. Depends how much we can build up Skulltaker's army. Create any settlement. Mission successful. You had totally forgotten about that. Savage blow. Oh, great game. Zinch uh, is ascendant. Drawn to destruction. Nice. So that did work for us. Perfect. Non-aggression pact with any faction. I mean, it's probably going to be the Dark Elves going to be our best, best chance of that. 
Um, yeah, we'll go for demons because then we can get higher tier demon stuff there. Well, we've got this one already, but yeah, more, more demons right now. What we are also going to do when we have the money is... I was like, why can't I build that? Needs to build the first bit. Well, yeah, we'll definitely get that in there and then go up and get the cultist. That'll be good. Um, Skull Taker, what are you, what are you building there? You're... Oh, the paladin's back. Are you, you, you're special, aren't you? you you're not dying. The thing is, Albert's going to be back soon. I mean, we could wait for the skulls. There's seven units there. Plus quite a few there. Oh, these guys. Oh, no, they, oh, it's, it's time before they start taking attrition, isn't it? Ah. They have a cooldown before they start taking. So they're not instantly gone. And they're not even taking massive amounts of it, of the attrition either. But they can't avoid that attrition, yeah. Okay. Well, in that case... And I could, I could just travel straight there. Is that... So we could, yeah, go there, bring those guys up, and smash them now. For the Blood God. Um, Do I want to go straight into the Huntsman? Let me know afterwards. Obviously, we will need to send a uh, force back there. Having another... We, we want to raise it, but going for another blood host, I think, would be helpful because then we can keep pushing on or send a unit, a force back over here. That is starting to get some lovely corruption. We do actually need to spread corruption, don't we, across the border? So maybe if we... Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are we successful in spreading it over here at all? I'm not seeing any spread. How's the best way to spread our glorious corny corruption we'll do all this and more though at the start of the next episode until then i hope you guys have enjoyed take care and ciao for now